Most of the time on the channel, we focus on the best money methods each week in GTA Online, but in this video, we're gonna go over the worst money methods you should never do and never waste your time on because there's just no point. We're gonna go from more general methods to some more business specific ones, starting with free roam bounties. This used to be one of the most fun things you can do back in the day in GTA, just killing bounties in free roam. It was a cool challenge to do, it felt amazing, and nowadays it's just not like that at all. There's two pretty clear and main problems with bounties nowadays. One, I don't know about you guys, but lately I've barely seen any bounties in free roam. Like you just rarely see them nowadays because not many people need to steal streetcars so they don't get bounties in the first place. And for that matter, I can't remember anyone calling Lester to place a bounty on anyone. So I'm just seeing less and less bounties in sessions. And plus, if you do see a bounty in free roam, the second problem with it is they usually just don't give you a lot of money. So there's no motivation to actually Actually go after him unless you just want to kill the guy because you want to say you killed a bounty in 2022 although that's not really impressive so as you can tell there's just not many good reasons to go after him especially nowadays back in the day it was a complete different story the bounty payouts have been the exact same since the release of the game in 2013 the minimum you could get is a thousand dollars the maximum is 10k which is not nearly enough to get someone to go after a bounty because that's barely anything nowadays and I can't really see anyone going for it unless the bounty is right next to them standing afk or not really doing anything what they should do with them is just increase the payouts make them a lot more attractive numbers like let's say 50,000. i think that's pretty reasonable maybe even a hundred thousand that would be pretty crazy those would be the maximum payouts of course and the minimums i would say something like 10,000 as the minimum or 20,000 if they're going all the way up to 100k as the max those would make it a lot more attractive for people to go after bounties and just overall more exciting it's not going to be the funnest time for the one that has the bounty on him, but it is more exciting as I said, because if you have a $50,000 or $100,000 bounty on you, you probably got to watch your back. Even with a $10,000 bounty, I find myself being like, okay, someone just take me out real quick so I could just get this bounty off my back and continue on with my day. Like, it's just not very thrilling as it once was, we'll say. The second method you should never do, and this is another general one, and that is taking out pedestrians in the streets and then just picking up whatever cash they had on the ground. It's not the most effective thing in the world, and that's a big understatement. In GTA reality, that 10, 20, 30, max like 60 or $70 you're picking up isn't gonna do a lot, and I don't think you can buy any ammo for it even if you wanted to. Because 60 GTA dollars is as important as like one cent in real life. It's not an amount of money you should care about too much. The only thing it could be good for is if you had a frustrated day and you want to take out your frustration on something, so you take it out on GTA pedestrians. Don't think of it as an actual money method because you're going to be sitting there for a while if you want to get to like a hundred thousand or a million dollars. Let's just say I would not recommend. The next one you should never waste your time on in GTA is robbing grocery stores. It's going to give you anywhere from a couple hundred to just over a thousand dollars, which if you think about it, it's not that bad because you don't have to do anything and it doesn't take a while, but it's not any significant money and you're going to have five stars. If you go from store to store plus you have to get from one place to another so that would take some time too the only time you should do something like this is if you're a complete beginner in gta and you're looking to get an extra thousand dollars to maybe buy some ammo or if you're looking to buy a really cheap and fast vehicle like let's say the batty 801 motorcycle and you need like an extra thousand for it in that case i would actually recommend you to do this but besides that it's not anything substantial that you can think of as a crazy good money method because it's not anywhere near that now let's go into some businesses that you should definitely stay away from in terms of making money. The first one being the hangar. And I gotta start by saying, do not buy this property for money making. It is absolutely horrific for that. The only thing you wanna buy it for is to actually store your aircrafts, which I mean, that's what a hangar is supposed to do. So make sure you buy it for that. It also has a business side to it, but I'm gonna explain why it's absolute garbage. Every source mission is way too long. It's gonna be about 10 to 20 minutes for every mission which is a very long time and it's so not worth the money you get for it at the end plus the missions themselves just get very boring and repetitive really quick and to fill up all your cargo space is gonna take a very long time and you are gonna be very bored if you actually go on with it so don't do it it's not worth it the only time you should touch it is not even if it has double money but I would say triple or quadruple money bonus then maybe it's actually not that bad even though you're gonna be a bit bored anyway since it is still the same mission in that case where it has 
has a big money bonus on it i would just fill it up at least a little bit not all the way because once again that would take forever and then just sell it without any bonus money on it each cargo is only worth about a couple thousand dollars which is very very bad it's nowhere near worth the 10 to 20 minute mission you have to do for it i believe the hangar stores up to 50 cargo crates so it's gonna take you a while at least for sure if you do it solo now when you do stumble across a bonus on it i recommend you do it with friends the more friends you have with you helping the more cargo crates it's gonna spawn each time overall besides those exceptions i would stay away from it the next one is the vehicle source and sell missions via the ceo office now with this one only a part of it i would stay away from so if you don't know you can source three different types of vehicles there's standard range vehicles that sell for 30,000, mid-range vehicles that sell for 50,000, and top range which is the best one they sell for $80,000. So with this one you want to stay away from the standard and mid-range vehicles. I would say it's only worth it to do top range vehicles. When you go on the CEO computer to source a vehicle it's going to be randomized which type of vehicle you get so if you don't get a top range just don't do it. Either restart your game or find another session something because only a top range vehicle is going to be worth your time for the amount of money you get at the end you need to spend a lot of money to get this whole thing set up anyway so it's definitely not the ideal money method if you're just starting out the next is contact missions now there's a reason that contact missions are one of the most popular types of missions to get a bonus money on them and that is because they just don't pay well they're super outdated nowadays if now was the year 2013 to 2015 i would say yeah definitely go for the missions they could be a lot of fun there's a lot of different ones too you can do but unfortunately it's 2022 it's not 2015 anymore the good old days will always be appreciated but unfortunately they passed us for example titan of a job is one of the most iconic missions there are in gta 5 and these contact missions should take about 5 to 10 minutes which is not very long it's a decent amount of time but when it comes to the payout it's going to be anywhere from a couple thousand to max let's say just over 10,000, which is just kind of meh it isn't a terrible payout but it's just meh you know you'd rather do the bonus money jobs weekly and unless they have a double triple or quadruple bonus on them i wouldn't really recommend you do them every now and then could be fun but as a regular money method nah then we have the document forgery office which is kind of branched out from the motorcycle club now i didn't even know this one existed up until like a year ago and if you've never heard of it up until today well, that's a good thing, because it's absolute dog poop when it comes to money making. On top of having an MC, this one's not going to be cheap to buy. Each of the offices is going to cost you around a million dollars. The cheapest one you can get, the absolute cheapest one, is 650k, and it's going to be way far in grapeseed. Plus, several more upgrades is going to be another at least a couple hundred thousand dollars, and a full one is going to be about 70,000 to 150,000 dollars to sell, which is not a lot. It might sound like a lot, but trust me for the amount of time you're spending and money to get this whole thing set up it's so not worth it and now that you know the worst money methods in the game click the video on screen now for the best solo money methods you can do in gta online i hope you all enjoy that video and peace